When you think of an emergency shelter, you may envision something like this, a space that allows people to warm up on a cold night or a building that provides temporary shelter. But a complex needs shelter is very different. These are two 15-bed facilities that people can only use when they're detained by police as part of the Summary Offenses Procedure Act. Basically, they're in custody. These are secure facilities that uh, individuals will not be coming and going as they choose. They will be arriving in police custody and they'll be delivered there for the, the duration of either 24 hours or until they're no longer a threat. These complex needs facilities provide an alternative to holding intoxicated people in cells. They're open 24 hours a day with medical staff on site. Right now they're set for a temporary 18-month pilot project with a chance to become permanent. But again, they're not what people imagine as a shelter. Like I said, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's most likely a duck. Um, it's, it's, it's a forced detox. That's, uh, that's what it is. Stevenson is a recovering addict who worked closely with the people living in the tent city in Regina three years ago. He sees a benefit to the facility, a push towards getting help, but he doesn't agree with what he believes is involuntary detention and he's not alone. I'm very happy to see that there's increased investment and uh, opening of new facilities. Um, I am disappointed that these two facilities in particular are solely for those under uh, uh, correctional orders uh, through the criminal justice system. Eaton believes the facilities would be more effective if they were voluntary or hybrid model. Other academics CBC contacted agree with Eaton and say, well, it's a step forward, it might be a step off the right path. Dane Patterson, CBC News, Saskatoon.